This is I have to get up. Okay, I'm told that we only have two more days of classes. Three days. So we want to finish off this chapter 10. Whoever made this coffee, thank you very much. Who was that? Leia? Thank you, Leia. What am I going to do on Pesach? We don't drink coffee. <laughs> okay, we're talking about the difference between a tzaddik and a gamor, a complete tzaddik, and a tzaddik who's not a complete tzaddik. Mm -hmm. But we can't forget that we're talking about tzaddikim in both cases. We're talking about very righteous individuals. Very, very holy people. So why isn't he a complete tzaddik? What's the difference? <laughs> complete tzaddikim, we learned in the first chapter, are very, very few. It says in the Medrash, Hashem looked into the, ch the chamber of the souls. He was looking for tzaddikim. He saw that there weren't very many. And since there were so few, so he set out at least one in every generation. At least one. That's a complete tzaddik. What if a person is not a complete tzaddik? What makes him not a complete one? Well, not a complete tzaddik, there are a lot of those. Baruch Hashem, righteous people, good people, wonderful people. Yeah. But they're not completely, completely righteous because that level is so rare. It's so, I mean, not everybody is a Lubavitcher Rebbe. Not everybody is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochoi. Not everybody is Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. Not everybody is David HaMelech. They are unique individuals. Not everybody is the Rambam. <clears throat> what makes them fall short? Well, it says here, he gives you the formula. That the Tzadik Gomor has achieved this level because somewhere along the line, he totally changed over any of the garments of the soul, which are thought, speech, and action, and channeled them into the service of Hashem. So that everything, his whole being, is constantly focused on Hashem. There is, not, there is nothing else in his perspective. So when you look at the Rebbe in action, whatever you see always looks so fascinating, so beautiful, so perfect. <clears throat> if the Rebbe is upset, there's a holy reason for it. He's upset because somebody is putting Jewish life in danger. He's upset because some, somebody is attacking Hashem's holy Torah. He's, he's personally, he has nothing for himself. A Rebbe has nothing for himself. His whole life is devoted to others. He's a leader. And the whole world is his responsibility. A person who has not achieved this level that all of his faculties are focused on Hashem. And that is his sole delight. We learn many levels of love. There's a strong love, a fiery love, a great love. The highest of all of these levels is the love of delights. That means to say that his whole delight is his love of Hashem. And it expresses itself in everything he does, everything he thinks, everything he says. <laughs> And a person who doesn't get to this absolute level is not the complete tzaddik. That's what we're learning. Page 153, for instance, the complete tzaddik is a person in whom the evil, the top lines here, the evil has been converted into good 
And so he's a tzaddik who knows only good. <clears throat> and he achieves this by removing all the filthy garments. What makes them filthy? They smell from ego. You know, you, you see, if you know that, the, you know, once you learn about this, you, you see people a little differently, you become more sensitive to them. That is to say, he despises the pleasures that the world has to offer. The whole of Advent, I had a teacher once who taught us that a newspaper has two kinds of news, good news and bad news. <laughs> The bad news is always on the front page. It's the headlines. Unless you're in a small community. In a small community, you know, a local boy gets picked for the baseball team. That's good news. That could be on the front page. Somebody gets married, it could be on the front page. But in the big newspapers, they put the bad news on the front page about war and murder and fires and terror disasters. And the good news is the advertising. <laughs> advertising is always good news. You buy this product, your life will be good news. So this Sadi Gomor, he's not interested in all that stuff. The pleasures of the world are not interesting to him. Bhatti had this wonderful example last week of a person who has COVID has no desire to eat even the most delicious food because she has, a person has no sense of smell. Without smell, food has no taste. Everything is dust and ashes. Anybody who's been sick knows that. I mean, I, did, I had my sense of smell taste, I didn't have any appetites. So I almost didn't eat anything until my father got like a certain drink that was really, really good that I would drink it. Because they were good. But otherwise, I really didn't want to drink. Please. Yeah, there you are. He despises these pleasures. Why? Why? So here, he, a person, this is Sadiq, does not have COVID. <laughs> Why does he despise pleasures? Because he knows that the source of pleasures we learned on the first page of the Tanya. The very beginning, you know, like that Hasid standing outside in the rain. He learned his first lesson. Yeah. You don't want something, don't let it in. Yeah. So there we learned that the source of pleasure is the element of water in the animal soul. Water. Water. Mayim. Mayim is the source of taiva. Taiva. Taiva is lust. The desire for pleasure. And more and more and more. The, the, this, he gets rid of all his taivas. Taiva, girls, is uh, uh, something to remember. Taiva is the source of uh, public enemy number one. In the service of Hashem, your personal taivas are your number one enemy. Because the goal is that your taiva should be for doing Torah, learning Torah, and doing mitzvahs. And since <clears throat> taivas come from the element of water in the animal soul, it's not from God. And the tzaddik gomer, he doesn't want anything that's not from God. He's, he's switched over. He's focused entirely, his focus entirely is on Hashem, the source of his life, the source of all life, the source of all goodness. He's not interested in any watered down version. What waters it down? Tivas. Tivas take the pleasure you have in God and they water it down. It should be a pleasure in yourself. And he and I cannot dwell in the same place, says Hashem. So to the extent that you allow in Tivas, that's the extent that you push away godliness. Mm -mm. That's a, a, a tough prescription. So there you are, the bottom of page 153, the complete tzaddik utterly hates something that's from the animal soul, because that is not the side of holiness, that's the 
other side in Aramaic, Sitrachra. In common parlance, Yetzahara. The bad, the bad counsel. And why does he hate the bad counsel of the Yetzahara? Because, top of 154, because he loves Hashem passionately. You know how you love Hashem passionately? <clears throat> can imagine, you know, we learned during the war, like the Gulf War, and we learned what the kind of things that they used to do when they would catch or capture somebody, the Arabs, or even the Americans. They would put him on a board, strap him on a board, and put him in a uh, uh, water, a tub of water, and submerge it. And he would be underwater drowning until he was almost dead. And then they'd bring him up, revive him, and question him. And if he wasn't cooperative, then they'd do it again. It was a t torture, torture. So how does a person feel when he's drowning like that? He yearns with a passion to be able to breathe air. In the same way that a person who feels that he's drowning yearns passionately to, to breathe and to live, that's how the tzaddik gum or the complete tzaddik has a passion for holiness. And anything else is like being, is like torture. That's called golos. That's the, the essence of golos. Hashem takes your, takes a, a godly soul, your godly soul, puts it into your animal soul, and it's like uh, strapped to a board underwater. Hi. It's, it's, Hi. it's golos. This is solar. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> so because he has such a profound, when a person has a, such a profound love of Hashem, There's no room for love of ice cream. Unless you're making an ice cream party on Shavuos, the children should come and hear the, the Ten Commandments, right? <coughs> then you put this, the Holy Spirit on it. Then it becomes enjoyable. Since Tibus, the rest says here, since Tibus are from Klippa, and that's the opposite of Kedusha of holiness, the opposite of love of Hashem. So therefore he hates to the same degree that he loves Hashem, to that degree he hates anything that's not love of Hashem. It doesn't make him a fanatic. You look at any video of the Rebbe, doesn't look like he's a fanatic. It looks like he's the, the consummate gentleman. He's always so considerate and understanding and, and no matter what level a person is on, when they come to the Rebbe, they feel that the Rebbe, there's nothing in the Rebbe's world except themselves when they stand in front of him. They feel there's total acceptance. And it's, it's such a tremendous pleasure to be with the Rebbe because of that. You know, like this, like this story of a friend of mine who brought his wife. He became a Balchuva, and he brought his wife to meet the Rebbe. He was totally taken, given over to the Rebbe, heart and soul, after all the difficulties of his life and many good things that he had done. So he, he merited to come to Lubavitch. And he recognized how great it was, and he became a de de devoted to the Rebbe. And he wanted his wife to share this feeling with him. And he brought her for the first time. And when they went out, he was so excited to know that now she was on the same page as he was. And she, he said to his wife, how do you feel? And she said, well, I'm sorry. I feel cold. He said, what? You feel cold? He was uh, bubbling over with happiness. And she was cold. And she said, I'd like to speak to the Rebbe again. Well, you can't speak to the Rebbe again. He's got so many people waiting. Well, maybe you could ask, she said. 
and women I like that they can they they some they can very quietly be extremely strong she said maybe you could ask he was so embarrassed he know he know, he knew the rabbi Groner, the rabbi secretary did not let people he was his whole job was not to let people in his whole job was to save the rebbe's time precious time and here she's asking him, go ask them after they had a yechidus for a few minutes. Minutes they were in. <clears throat> well, he had no choice when they asked. So the Rebbe, I'm sure Rabbi Groner grumbled. And he went to the Rebbe and the Rebbe said, send her in without her husband. And they had a whole yechidus. And Rabbi Groner was very, very upset at the amount of time it took, but the Rebbe didn't pay when Rabbi Groner would open the door, like to say, enough already. We have to get on with the other people. The Rebbe paid no attention to him. He was just completely devoted to this person who stood in front of him. And when she came out, her husband said, you know, how do you feel now? She said, I feel warm. See, and that, that's the great quality of the Rebbe, of a person on such a level that we're talking about, that he has no selfish feelings. His feelings are only how he can help others. I heard once the Rebbe say in a Fabrengen, my whole function in life is just to be a pipeline, a channel for blessings. So this is the Tzaddik Omar. And because this is what the tzaddik, complete Tzaddik is, <clears throat> he has a complete hatred of anything that is not for Hashem. And that's what King David writes in Psalms in the Psalm 139. You can look it up. We say it once at least once a month. Usually people say, I, I hate them with a total hatred. He writes, Who does he hate with such a total hatred? He hates the enemies of the Jewish people. He hates the Yet Sahara internally. He hates the Yet Sahara with a total hatred. How could it be? Says David Amelach. In the next part of the verse, look into my heart and see, he says to Hashem. That's pretty bold thing to say. I couldn't say such a thing. Look into my heart and see. If I'm not saying the truth, he says. I, I hate anything that's not from you, Hashem, with a total hatred. So on the bottom of the page here, page 154, so there's a direct or inverse proportion According to the amount of love he has for Hashem, so is the amount of his hatred towards the Sahara, towards the Sitra Ahra, towards the other side. What? You don't have a chair? You don't have a book? Who's got a book for Rachel? Okay, a book we've got. Here's a chair. So his hatred for evil is the exact opposite of his love for Hashem. Page 155. That's the complete tzaddik. Now, who, what is the tzaddik? She'en gamor, the tzaddik who's not a complete tzaddik. What, how, do, how do we understand that? And the answer is, just insert the no. A person whose love is not so intense to that little degree that it's not so intense, that's a degree that there's that he's not a complete tzaddik. <laughs> he's still very righteous. He's still very righteous, but he's not on that ultimate level. <clears throat> so therefore, Lochen, now we go level by level. The tzaddik gamor, his whole total pleasure is in godliness. The tzaddik who's not a complete tzaddik. And therefore, and therefore he, he finds anything from the other side that's not holiness, he finds it disgusting. Or like they say in Beis Rivka, they misuse the language. It's nauseous, they say. Nauseous actually means a person who feels an upset stomach. They say, oh, I feel nauseous. But they use it in Beis Rivka, to mean anything that's disgusting, the thing itself is nauseous. Well, a thing can't be nauseous. A person is nauseous. But that's what they say. So this uh, tzaddik shenagamur, 
Anything that's not holiness of Hashem is nauseous to him. Because his pleasure absolutely is only in Hashem. He finds that this mius means disgusting. So anything that's not hateful and is not disgusting totally to a person, that's the degree uh, that to that degree he's not a complete tzaddik. And we're talking now about a fraction of a fraction of 1%. And we're talking about very righteous people. But or the, the, the example that I gave you last week was like the, 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 the pawn on the chessboard who made it to the last row and he's just waiting for the opportunity to be able to move that pawn into the last row and to become a queen. But he's still not there. Or like on, you see these movies, the, 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 the documentaries of people climbing Mount Everest. And they're almost there. And there's a, a tremendous storm with huge winds and snow and freezing cold. And they strap themselves into a safe position on the mountain and they just stay there. They can't move. They have no energy to move. They have no strength to move. And the, it's freezing, freezing cold, and the winds are 120 miles per hour. They, they can't move. They can't get there. So this person is almost a tzaddik gomer, and he can't complete the journey. So the tzaddik shayna gomer, his love of Hashem, he loves Hashem, but he just can't get there absolutely. So what does this mean? This means that the garments, he got rid of all the filthy garments? Well, not quite. There's still something left. We're going to learn in the next chapter. He's going to break it down stage by stage. He's going to break it down. But there's still a little something left, maybe from the, in his thoughts, maybe some nostalgia for the good old days. Or sometimes he slips up almost. Not really, it doesn't say anything wrong, but he almost came to the point of saying something that wasn't worthy of a, of a righteous person or doing something that was not of the appropriate for a righteous person, but he doesn't do it. He doesn't say it. He doesn't think it. He's a righteous person, but he came almost, almost. Okay, so the filthy garments in which he had been as a Russia or even as a Benini, he still had these filthy garments. He didn't completely convert them to, that they should become good. That any negative tendencies they might have have become used out in the service of Hashem. Page 156. So since the animal soul, the energy of the animal soul has not become godly soul yet, to some tiny minimal degree, he still has, these, the filthy garments still have a hold on him. Elashu bottle, but remember the, the, the expression bottle. Bottle means totally out of the picture. Like, let's say you're cooking a, a shallot for Shabbos. It's still in the early stages, and there's a lot of water in the pot, and a lot of meat, and a lot of vegetables, a lot of beans. And somehow there's one drop of milk from the kitchen that falls into the pot. It's a big, big pot. What do you do if it doesn't fall on a piece of meat, just falls into the soup? What are you going to do? Is the whole thing, you have to throw out the whole thing? No, you grab a ladle and quickly you stir it in. As long as it doesn't fall on a piece of meat. If it falls on a piece of meat, then it's a different story. Then the whole piece of meat becomes something that's forbidden. But if you just quit, stir it in, so it's less than 60 times. <clears throat> it's, it's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not even one sixtieth of the whole soup. So it's bottle. It has, it's, 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 it's like it's not there. And the whole thing becomes kosher. So therefore, 
in this person, the Tzadik Shein Gomor, whatever is impure that's left in him is bottle, it's nullified, it's as if it doesn't exist. And therefore, but, but since it there is the reality that did drop, that drop of milk did fall into the soup. So therefore there is Ra, there still is something negative left in his character, but it doesn't express itself. It's totally, it's out of the picture. It's like if a per, you catch a criminal and, you know, not out of praise for the American criminal system, it's really not very good, but if you catch a criminal and you lock him up in a top security prison and he misbehaves and he gets put in what they call the shoe, which is ice solitary confinement, he's not doing anything. He's out of action. He's really out of action, but he's the, he is there in prison. So the evil inclination in this person is still there, but it's out of action. Totally, it's out of commission. And the fact here, it says on the bottom, 156, the fact that he retains some evil in his, even though it's out of commission, indicates that his love of Hashem is not complete. He doesn't have a complete love of Hashem. So that is 0 0.005 five of one percent of evil that's that's left in his car in, in in his thought or speech or actions means means he's not a complete tzaddik he's an incomplete tzaddik this is the tzaddik paraloi he's a tzaddik he has evil but the evil is in case out of commission page 157 Mahine. so that's the tzaddik paraloi and in this category, you know how many levels there are of tzaddikim in this category? Thousands, thousands and thousands. Because the, the, the complete tzaddikim, the tzaddik who is a complete tzaddik, they're very rare. They're very, very few and far between. And this is the, the tremendous merit that we all have to have found our way somehow, to have found our way here to Chabad. Because Chabad is the expression <clears throat> of the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, which is the teachings of love of Hashem and fear of Hashem, how to serve Hashem. Someone asks you, what is Chabad all about? You go home and they say, oh, you're learning in Chabad. What's it all about? You say, you can tell them in one word, Chabad is learning about how to serve Hashem with love in your heart and with fear. And this becomes the whole of your emotional awareness. That's what it's all about. Oh, it sounds very good. It is. It's a very, very lofty thing. And for this, you have to learn and you have to apply what you learn and you have to work hard to do a lot of mitzvahs. You have to help a lot of other people. You have to be devoted. But the Baal Shem Tov was one of these great people. And we are his students. And the Alter Rebbe was, his, was one of his students. And the Magad, who was his teacher, was one of his students. And the Mitla Rebbe after him and the Semach Tzedek were all great, great, great tzaddikim, all of them. Great tzaddikim. And how do we have the merit to learn their teachings, to try and go in their ways. That's, that's just our, our great for, good fortune. Somehow, maybe your great grandmother was a great, righteous, greatly righteous person. And she went and interceded on behalf of her great granddaughter. And Hashem said, in your merit, We'll, we'll make sure she meets somebody from Chabad and we'll, she belongs on the team. How else can you figure it out? Why are you here and not somebody else? I had a teacher when I was a student here. One day he had a long beard. 
he took the pins out of his beard, he unrolled it. <laughs> it was very funny. He unrolled his beard and he kissed it. And he said, I love you. <laughs> yes, I love my beard. I love, I never touched it. Never. It's holy. It's an expression of holiness. And then he said, you know why you're here? He says, because when, when the, <clears throat> the Rebbe Sholem Dovber, the Rebbe Rashab, the fifth Rebbe, whose birthday is coming up this coming Friday, he established this yeshiva in which Hasidus would be part of the daily learning. He went, it took years before he actually launched the project. And the, during those years, he went to the gravesite of his father, the Rebbe Shmuel, and his grandfather, the Tzemach Tzedek. And he traveled to Ukraine, to Nyezhin, to the gravesite of his great-grandfather, and to Hadich, to the gravesite of the Alter Rebbe. And he went to Mezhebush, also in Ukraine, uh, to pray by the gravesite of the Baal Shem Tov and the Magid. I think the Magid is together with the Baal Shem Tov, but I'm not, I have to check on that. And what did he pray for? He prayed that the, the project would be a success, that he would be able to introduce the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov into Yiddishkeit so that not just for tzaddikim, but for everybody could serve Hashem with love and fear of Hashem. And that's how Chabad got started. And he prayed for the people who would merit to learn in such a yeshiva. And he, he handpicked them. Chai Atkins. He pulled you out. Batya. Shoshana. He pulled every one of us like that. How come you're here? It's a great privilege, it's a great responsibility. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the idea of the tzaddik she'en Adam, or he's not complete because whatever in him is not completely righteous is totally out of commission anyway. And on this level, there are tens of thousands, thousands and thousands of tzaddikim. Righteous Jewish people, very, very righteous Jewish people, not completely righteous like the Baal Shem Tov, but almost. And then there's the rest of us <laughs> try and go in, in the right way. We'll continue tomorrow. Business Hashem, we have to finish this chapter before Pesach. <laughs> Wonderful day. It's a spring day. Yesterday it felt like it wasn't ever going to be spring, but today it is. And it's warmer, and it's, we have a beautiful blue sky and a beautiful sunny day. Enjoy the spring. You too. Warm weather. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. We love you. Thank 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 you. Th